guys. I'm here with my snorkel mask on. I'm having a really good time today. I'm hanging out with my friend Paige. We're going to uh, drink and hang out in the water. It's lots of fun. Eww. What's up guys? How you doing on this beautiful afternoon on Kikakar? It's a nice hot day and we are just chilling out in the back by Iguana Reef, having a couple of beers, checking out some fish, maybe throw a fly line at some of these bonefish swimming around a little bit. Earlier you were seeing this big school of mullet go racing around and something was chasing it. Oh, nice. And uh, I think that it was that big barracuda that just swam off. Thank you very much. Belkin is the beer of belief. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Check out what I just found, you guys. This is a giant hermit crab. Look at him. Oh my god. And that's what we were just talking about. Wait, 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 wait. Took over this conch shell. Can I hold it? Yeah. Um, he came out. <laughs> Check this bad boy out, you guys. We found a giant hermit crab under the dock right here. He's a little bit skittish because now we're partying with him and he he's wants to come out. To he's not down to party. <laughs> come on out, bro. <laughs> then he pops out. Look at this badass little hermit crab living in this conch shell. He's actually pretty big. Don't be such a scaredy cat, bro. Here he comes. What? So wild. Look at this giant crab that lives inside of here. What? He's big. He's big. So you guys, back here by the main back bridge at Iguana Reef, they've got a whole bunch of different structure um, kind of thrown into the water to create some reef habitat, some different rocks and some netting and stuff. You can see right here, there's this large piece of cargo net stretched out to kind of create some artificial coverage. And if you look at it, you can see really beautiful little tiny fish swimming around the underside. Like right there, it's a little tiny little pepper fish, a machoose. There's another one over there. And what we're hoping to find inside of here is gonna be some seahorses. And see, somewhere right along the ridge of these nets, hiding just like that little machoose, 
is going to be some seahorses. Yeah. Oh no, Pete, they're not really too into it. But I but I feed them. We should go, we should get a bag of sardines and go out front and feed birds. You want to feed birds? It's fun.
What's up, man? How you doing? What are these? Those are probably... It's like a, it's like a wine, huh? Yeah. Like fermented, fermented yeah. little pump things. Yeah. Cool, I made some of those way back in the day, actually. I kind of yeah. forgot about them, though. And then these are oranges? Yeah. All right, I'll take one of these, too. That'll, that'll do me. And then you see these onions I have sitting over right here. Gonna walk out onto this dock here. It's nice, sunny, slightly cloudy overcasted but for the most part hot day and uh, there's very little wind so it's a perfect day for fly fishing and I'm hoping that the low murk on this water out here is going to cause it to hold some bonefish. There was a few sailboats parked out here that no longer are and hopefully that'll clear up some of the fishing zone and you can see it's still full obstacle course fishing. See the posts all over the place so when you hook up on a fish and it wants to run you're dealing with these posts that they tie the boats up with just being scattered about. And if one's pretty far away and a fish goes out and wraps around it, you are screwed. So, you gotta try to avoid those and hope we don't get busted off on a pole. Aside from all these posts right here, this is an excellent, excellent place to find bonefish. They're usually stacked up on these flats. And um, we're gonna see if we can't get into a few. Beep. So after that little bit of action, it seems like I spooked the school pretty decently. And they're all the way out here on the tip. So we're gonna come out here and see if we can't get into them out here. Fishing is always fun. That guy really did put up a mean little fight. Um, it's nice to play them out a bit and really let them run around so they're not so wiry when you get them in. But out here with all these poles and posts in the dock and it's kind of hard to really control where they're gonna go. I'd like to try to get them, get them held as quick as possible and not possibly lose another fly and leave a hook in a fish's mouth. So I try to usually land them pretty quick and get them back in the water pretty quick. Um, 
a lot of fun. Coming down and just throwing a little fly, catching a couple bones. Always a blast. Might have to do some more of it. There's another good bone fish on. This one's racing. Check this beautiful fish out. So cool. Bonefish are pound for pound. One of the hardest fighting, strongest fish you'll ever catch. And they're just gorgeous. Super bright silver. Look at the bullet head on them. And they just shoot through the water. Very, very aerodynamic and they're tough. When you feel them, it's just like armor and muscle. You know, uh, when, you're, when you're that bright and shiny, my bud, you gotta be fast and you gotta be strong. And you gotta have armored scales on you or out here you're just gonna get eaten up by big toothy critters. So, so I'm out of the little bitter flies I was throwing before, the Josh Balance flies that I was casting. And what I have right now is just this little green kind of crab imitation. It's got some little beads on it, a couple of little legs. It's like the simplest little fly in the world, but the bonefish seemed to like it. It's what that one broke me off on. Um, you know, it's what I was fishing when that one broke me off. And um, I'm gonna see if I can keep catching them on it. This kind of looks like a little shrimp or a little crab or something. Uh, stoked to get three hookups just now and land two of them. Uh, bummed to break off and lose one of my flies. And I'm um, hoping that we can just keep up the good luck and get into another fish. Well, sometimes it can be a little difficult to fool a school too many times. And I just caught a few fish out of this pocket and hooked a few fish out of this pocket. And it seems like maybe I scattered, scattered the school because I don't see any bone fish holding up. Really what you want is to get the whole school of them feeding together, kind of uh, get that competition bite. And uh, of course, the more fish there are in one spot, the more likely one of them is gonna like the look of what you're throwing at them. Well, sometimes a few hookups is all you can get out of a bonefish school. I think I scattered the pack. There was a bunch of fish swimming together, but now all I see is a couple of singles uh, every now and then you'll see one or two swim by but they tend to ignore your bait and just haul haul off looking for the rest of the school um, the competition the predatory competition bite is a real thing with fish of all kinds of different species but with bonefish and especially and what will happen is you cast into a school you start moving that um, little fly that little crab fly or shrimp fly or whatever around and as they start rushing it um, the lead fish kind of looks at it and decides maybe that's not actually something I want and turns away and then one of the fish right behind it one of the less dominant fish in the school it comes in right behind it and grabs it immediately because it's like oh I get the pass I can go for it and it takes a little less time to investigate and see what's really going on um, when the school is completely scattered you can't really get that um, that uh, bite effect off so we'll come back in a little bit maybe let them regroup and see if we can't get into another one and if not just quick fun little bonefish session while I'm cruising around the island it's probably gonna be time to go get something to eat Hey guys, it's a beautiful afternoon here on Key Cocker Island in Belize. And I made two new friends today. This is Tyler and Anthony, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tyler and Anthony. I'm glad I got your guys' names right. You know, we just met, but. I don't know if you guys can see the tarpon behind these guys right here, but it's pretty wild looking. Oh, 
How wild is that, you guys? Look at all these tarpon. Some of those are big, big fish. And they're just hanging out, waiting for us to drop a food in front of them. They all live right here in this little goon behind here and basically never leave. At night, some of them, you see some in the split at night, but catching that big boy right there in the split at night would be unreal. The tarpon all live right behind the sardine shack here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna set this cam pretty close up. Here, one sec, yeah, right like that. See, you guys can see that fish right there, right? So here's one that Tyler's about to throw in. See him going for it? Boom. Here we go. We're going to get in here. Whoa! He knocked it out of my hand all the way up into the air. See this, guys? They are ready. Right here, bud. Totally grabbed onto my hand for a second. Amazing. Go for the small one. Go for the smallest ones you can find. All right, one more time, guys. Watch this. They got any small Whoa! <laughs> Do you want one too, Anthony? Why? Here, here, go ahead. There's one to throw in. Sometimes it's bird. But. Okay, you guys, for one final experience. Whoa. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try that one more time just because it's, it's pretty wild. Right here in front of the camera. Jesus. <laughs> they are so ferocious. Okay, now we need to save the rest of you. Whoa. That was him just jumping at the camera. That was, a, that was a tarpon literally grabbing the mouth of the camera just now. It was pretty unreal. Okay guys, how insane is that? That's just so wild. Uh, what a monster school of tarpon. Some of these fish in here are ginormous. The, the, that biggest fish is probably 80 pounds. 70. 70? I think. I, would go, I could go with 70. That fish right there, that, that fish is a monster. Look at the size of that tarpon right there. Look at the giant jaws on him. That fish is, that fish is a big, big fish right there. They look like they It's ginormous. That fish is ginormous. Look at the beast swimming towards the camera right now. What a monster. <laughs> We're gonna get out of here. Try to go catch some fish. Make sure if you're ever out here on Keycocker Island to ask where the bait stop with the tarpon is because Someone will send you back here. You can buy a little bag for pretty cheap. Feed some tarpon. What is it? Tarpon view? Yeah, yeah. Tarpon view. Make sure to come check out tarpon view. Feed the tarpon and uh, check out the back of the island because this is pretty cool back here. And those tarpon are unreal. Unreal.
If you don't like and subscribe and turn on that notification, we're gonna beat you up. I'm serious, we're gonna beat you up. What do we mean, beat up? We're gonna beat you up like this. <clears throat> yeah, boy. Better watch it when it drops. Or some beat you up. I'll find your home. Don't worry, I'll find it. Yeah, homes! You better watch our videos because we we could find your house. We gonna beat you up. I'll beat you, you up after school. If you hear me loud and clear, I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> no, don't watch that, don't watch that. <laughs>